Monaco Pizza presents SCP. The Steve Dangle Podcast with your hosts, Steve Dangle and Adam Wilde. I'd like to start today's show with a passage from a guy named Carl Smallwood. No relation to Jake and Smallwood. It's just, oh, this is... This is just a guy named Carl. The Smallwood clan knows no bounds. Does they he do. have a bad tavern? No, he does not. He said, while playing Roller Coaster Carl's Tycoon bad. one time... Oh. While playing Roller Coaster Tycoon one time, I remember that I was tasked with the mission of getting a higher approval rating than the park next door. Rather than make my park better... I instead built a roller coaster that launched people at 100 miles an hour into my rival's park. Since technically these people died in my rival's park, their approval rating would plummet and I would and people would rush to my park and straight onto my death coaster, which caused their rating to drop lower and lower. I did this for an hour until the game said I'd won. And ladies and gentlemen, that is why I can never have any modicum of, modicum of power. Okay. I, I just thought wanted you, you were going to gonna find a way to like I definitely thought Eugene Melnick was getting brought up in that I kept going all right how does this relate to the sentence? well I tried actually but I was like well, I don't know how, how can I work Eugene into this and I just realized that I couldn't because like I don't even know what's going on there I don't think Eugene knows what's going on there I don't know I don't think that was written by Carl that seems like something Jesse would do yeah it does it does Pretty well positive. here's the, here's the the, the, sh- the thing with this show we know we're starting the show at four o'clock we know there's a very good chance that by the end of this show we're gonna have some sort of update on William Nylander because of insider Ryan Lacey of Columbus, Ohio. Do we know he's from Columbus? Have no. we confirmed that? But he had a Blue Jackets jacket or a jacket uh, sweater. Well, and there's so. no Blue Jackets fans outside of Columbus. That'd be silly. That'd be ridiculous. It would be a little much. So he must be from Columbus, yeah. Ohio. Yeah, and he must be ready to rock for tonight's game. You know, because no, I for those about to rock, Freddie. Please, wham! Please, <laughs> please be good. Please be the best. I want to thank or Sparky. I don't care. I do want to thank everybody who sent me the TSN link. I guess they were musing on uh, TSN radio this week mm-hmm. about uh, William Nylander for Brandon Sod, and uh, that's a troll, right? Like they're just trolling you. I think so. Yeah. You think TSN is taking time out of their schedule to troll me yes. personally? Bob McKenzie. <laughs> He got into like a like a huddle with Ray Ferraro and Jeff O'Neill, Jeff O'Neill and Gord Miller. All right, boys, here's the play. Text Pierre. <laughs> Mess with Adam. We're gonna do it. Is that? Do you think that's what happened? I think that's exactly what happened. There it is. Yeah. So, but what we do know is this: Mike Babcock last night said that they were missing some pieces, plural, and that they would definitely be back. Prominent pieces, and they would definitely be back. Plural. Well, and you were on Tim and Sid last night. I was, and I was hoping we'd get the Nylander tr- uh, trade or signing, and close, Chris White. Yeah. Chris White. You got an yeah. even bigger deal. <laughs> Man, I'm glad we got anything. Like, that's, it's only a 90-minute show. Like, what are the odds that a trade is going to break during that show? Pretty cool. Well, and I, I want to... And also the experience in general. I do want to save the Weidman... Starting the fact that they even asked. I do want to save the Weidman stuff, and we actually have to, we have to talk about it. But, but firstly, Nylander. We could get it in an hour. So an hour into the show, we could know. Maybe less. But in the meantime, what do you think the chances are that anything actually happens tonight? This is more real chatter than I think we've heard in weeks. It is. And it's weird because it seems to have sort of started with the Lacey stuff. Um, and, okay. Well, it really kind of started with the Babcock stuff last night, right? It, it did, but like that uh, so i said this on tim and sid which is a that's just a silly way to start a sentence but i uh, said this on tim and sid the leafs have for a while now been trying this talking it into existence thing this positive energy and you know i i had heard that you know uh when, when the leafs were heading out on the road for game s- five i think it was against boston or whatever it was the you know the in uh People who worked at Scotiabank Arena, or I guess Air Canada Center at the time, were like, hey, we'll see you in a couple days. Right? So they're trying to talk Game 6 into existence, and it worked. And they tried to talk Game 7s in, into existence. So maybe it's Babcock trying to talk a deal into existence. But Lacey tweets this today, and all of a sudden Bob McKenzie tweets something, and it got the chatter going, and we might actually have a Nylander thing today it would be really really nice to get this off our plate Jesse and I uh, when I picked Jesse up at the GO train station here in Oshawa he said I'm so excited not to talk about this and I said yeah because we have to talk about Marner for the next few months we know that Uh, Matthews is basically done 
Or at least that's been speculated on. It's basically done. Marner and Paul Marner, his father, are going to be the ones that we hear about a lot next. Oh, dads. Dads are great. Now, um, I'm not saying Paul Marner is a bad guy. I don't know anything about Paul no, Marner. No, but no, no. It'll just be it's his dad. His dad will play into this. Yeah, it's all, it's all just anticipation. Um, I'm The one thing I'm disappointed on from Tim and Sid is we almost got Marner. And I wanted to just be like, listen, Mitch, you know, we... We just want you to have fun. We just want you to react. We're not, not going to talk shop or anything. Like, like Sid and I off air, we're, we were just talking about like, like what would you do with ten million dollars? You know, that's <laughs> all I wanted to ask him so bad, and he wasn't he wasn't able to do it. It didn't work out in terms of time, and I probably would have never been asked back. So maybe it's a good thing. Well, you know what? I think you got to shoot your shot. You got a chance like that. You got to go for it. Come on. Yeah, you got to do it. Um, If you have a chance to ask a really uncomfortable question on national television, you got to do it. uh, I I just, I'm wondering here um, if, if William Nylander gets done, let's just speculate. Jesse, do you too? Oh, can't wait. Let's speculate. Is it a long-term or short-term deal? Long. Jesse, what do you think? Bridge. You think it's a bridge? Mm-hmm. Are you just it's, saying that to be this, different? No, it's, it's been too long for it not to be a bridge. If it's going to be, oh, he signed for 6.8 in seven years, and what everybody said it should have been, this would have been done four months ago. So I think at this point, it's got to be something different that just gets it done so he doesn't have to be traded or sit out a year. Is there any deal he signs that you would be unhappy with? Uh, what does that deal look above like? Above 7.5. Like they were, they were talking hockey central at noon yesterday. Like, what if it's seven and a quarter? Yeah, eh. whatever. Who cares? Eh. No, no, I want it to be seven. Really? It's two hundred and fifty thousand dollars against a half of a fourth line player. Eighty million dollar cap and growing. Like, th- and that's what you're upset about. Plus, I don't know the exact math on this, but if he signs for seven and a quarter, let's say over six years or seven years, um. With the, with how the cap will play out, it'll be a huge cap hit this year. But the savings might bring it down to like seven. And what? He's not worth a penny more than David Pasternak. It's not how it works, man. It's not how it works. Also, Pasternak's deal is ridiculous. In the same way that Drysidles is a little bit ridiculous, and I think it gets done somewhere in the middle, which would be right around seven two five. Jesse, what would it be for you? You'd be upset. I'm Seven two five. You'd be four Drake. Years I'm upset. What deal would make me upset? Yeah. What would Ooh. What would make you go? Ah, I don't like this. This feels bad. Eight. Yeah, eight for sure. Um. Yeah, I think I think Steve nailed it with above seven point five. It would kill me. A one year deal. I don't think no. that's out. That's not. There's no chance to it. Well, I hope not. But yeah. that would kill me. No. How short of a bridge would make you upset? Uh, it's anyway, got to be at least three. It's got to be three I'd years. I'd be comfortable with three. Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the thing that, like, you know, people talk about two-year deals or whatever. First off, he's never going to sign a two-year deal. His agent would not be doing due diligence mm-hmm. if he signed a two-year a, deal. Yeah. Uh, three-year deal is great, and I feel like a three-year deal is fine, but I, I would rather overpay for him now while they're tight against the cap because seven years from now when that, when that deal is still happening and he's in his prime years... $7 million isn't going to be that much against the cap anymore, guys. Well, and like, okay, so I hate the $8 million number, and I think it's too high. Oh, really? But, well, but then I was thinking it's about, like, a, like okay, ex- man, in, like, three years, mm, yeah, he's going to be... I I don't think it's far-fetched that he becomes an $8 million player, but, dude, do you want to win? It still goes back to that. Just save that little bit of extra money. That's why I say seven two five. because now that you've waited so long, it is... Basically a seven million dollar cap hit. Mm. I think that's what it ends up being. Can I guarantee it will be seven point four two for four years? That's what your guess is. is with a no movement clause. Do you have something? To there, say? He no, can't, can't, he can't get that. a no movement clause. Ah, damn it! I thought you were reading <laughs> off Twitter. No, no, uh, this is my guarantee before it goes live. Mm. Mm-hmm. No inside. All right, let's go, let's call it. What do you think it is? That's it. Seven, okay, seven, seven point, point two four. four. Seven point four two. Four two for four years. Any uh, which was six mm, seven years seven two five. And I'm gonna go four years six nine, like Mark Savard said, because it's a nice number. That is pretty nice. And also, Mark Savard did tweet. Do you th- do you believe Mark Savard's tweet from last night, which said six point nine million dollars gets the deal done? No, I think mm-hmm. that was just him. Was he trolling? I mean, it, it read like it. 
I don't know. Okay, if he is... Want me to text? Yeah, text him. Can you text him? Text yeah, text him. Let's find out. Because I, I would like to know if he was being serious about it. And he said my insider will remain nameless. Because uh, he, he's too smart of a man. This is a silly thing I'm his doing right now. No, I text just, him. Just text him. No, I know, but it's... Uh, it's is, is, his insider, is his insider too smart of a man to reveal his name? I assume so. Is he committed to the truth? I think he's all about the truth. Whoa. 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 <laughs> He and Rumor Break, <laughs> all about the truth. Are you still blocked? Um, no, because Rumor Break died oh, and then restarted, yes, remember? Yes, yes, I think Rumor Break has died twice now. <laughs> and then his friend logs onto his account every time and goes, hey, sorry, Rumor Break is Rumor Break died, but he really loved you guys. <laughs> Rumor Break died for your sins. Rumor Break is Super Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Boop, 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 are you, doo, 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 are you allowed to joke doo, doo, about a man dying? He's not dying. It's the same guy. He's but probably the, forty-eight in the, his bedroom. But the account said he died <laughs> in his basement. <laughs> and oh, then you his, say it. And then his friend Joey logged on because he knew the password. He's the one guy that knew oh. rumor break, <laughs> knew him personally. And you're gonna regret making fun of him, Wild. You're gonna regret it. Imagine breaking your own death. <laughs> Well, I mean, okay, maybe we. This is getting dark. Uh, what did uh, What did Savvy say? Uh, nothing yet, and okay. I assume he won't respond. What did you say? Does I, he have his red receipts on? Uh, no, no, I don't know. I don't know if he does. I'm well, surprised. People who have their red receipts on are ballsy. Oh yeah, I turned that off. There's just some people who don't know. Like Nick yeah. Kiprios probably has them on because he doesn't know you can turn them off. <laughs> Remember <laughs> when we saved Rogers thousands of dollars? That's exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> Literally thousands of dollars? <laughs> because like, every tweet shit. that was tweeted in the universe came through to Nick Kiprios' phone via notification. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't know. <laughs> uh, you imagine the replies Nick Kiprios gets on a daily basis. <laughs> like, so just... Nick Kiprios, for those of you who don't know the story, Jesse yeah. just told you most of it. No, but it's all he, he came on the show and his phone was at 100%. Mm-hmm. And at the beginning of the episode. At the beginning of the episode. And, it was buzz, 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 buzz. An hour buzz. and a half later, he, he was at like half. <laughs> and he had not checked it. Yeah. And it's because he got notifications for everything. Every, every, app, every, every app on your phone, he didn't know how to turn off the notifications. Every, every reply, <laughs> every mention, like, every, every tweet, follow, every like and yeah. retweet, every follow... <laughs> Like, you know how much money in data? Because Rogers, I'm sure, pays for his phone. Oh, yeah. Nick Kiprios. We literally saved that company money that day. <laughs> there are the reasons that the Blue Jays will be able to re-sign Vladimir Guerrero in a few years like, when he needs it. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> like, we cut down on his phone's carbon footprint. Yeah. How did he see it died. it died from notifications? I've never seen that. And I tweet all day. How did he know when he's getting a call or a text? Because he wouldn't be able to differentiate How would you even tell? Yeah, How I don't know. How did we get a hold of him to do the show? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> he managed it, though. Somehow yeah, he, he, was wa- he waited his way through those notifications and found our text and came on the show. He, he showed shot up, his way. Showed up the on only time. way he knows how with his knuckles. <laughs> That's how he sends and he his, brought a case of his water. That's how along. he responds. Yeah, I'll come on the show. Mm. Just punched. <laughs> Just stares at his phone threateningly, and it's like, <laughs> "All right, I got it. I got to pick up almond milk at the grocery store." It, like he just threatens the phone into writing a grocery list. So I have a question for you: Is Tyler Ennis more valuable than William Nealon? Yep. <laughs> Did you see yep, that? Yeah, but I agree with it. Whoever said that? Who said that? That's the hockey the first... writers. I guess the, the idea is that per capita. That's Based so on what dumb. William Nylander's perceived value is, is Tyler Ennis a more valuable player per, per, per capita? capita? Are we talking about population? Like a dollar, not per, capita, but like per, like if pound you to, for pound, <laughs> pound for pound, <laughs> is Mighty Mouse better than Anderson Silva? Whoa. Yep. Whoa. So he'd win relative to what he makes. I that's guess. How it works? I don't think that's how it works. No. Nope. You know how many actually bros we're about to get? Actually, I bro. Don't know. Probably could. I know. See that flying arm bra? Ar- <laughs> arm bra? <laughs> flying arm bras. Um, yeah, no, I, I, uh, I would really love thing. to see uh, William Nylander back. 50 minutes from right now, we'll know for sure. Can we? We should probably read the actual tweet from Ryan Lacey. He said at 5 o'clock. Sure. Oh, yeah, okay. So if you didn't see yeah, this, yeah. a guy tweets out a picture of him with a Kyle guy, Dubas this morning. A guy who is now famous. And he <laughs> said, he said basically. This is Columbus, by the way. This is your dart guy. 
Yeah. Like, easily. This is his dark guy moment. His show is Laces Out with Ryan Lacey. That's really good. We didn't know who he was, and now we know who he is. Like that. Dark guy. Is... Are the Columbus Blue Jackets Blue Jackets popular enough to even have a dark guy? Yes. Like, are there enough people in Columbus who care for them to make him a thing? According because it to seems Doug like McLean, more no. Leaf fans care about Ryan than actual Blue Jackets fans. Well, because it's so silly that like he's like that it's even a thing. So Ryan Lacey today says, "Breaking just spoke with Maple Leafs GM Kyle Dubas and asked where they stand on William Nylander." His response was, I'll have an update by 5 p.m. Something tells me a resolve in the Nylander situation is close. <laughs> Noah Love, and this is from about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> He's got wow. 1,100 likes. Wow, just 70 minutes until we find out if some random kid on the streets of Columbus is a Toronto legend. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Dude, it's true. Absolutely he true. He will be a hero. He'll be trending. Ryan Lacey. Oh, man. Uh, we'd have to have him on. I wish we had our phone system in. I would be like, let's get him on the podcast. And it comes out that he's rumor break. <laughs> and he's he's risen from the dead because he's the Jesus of hockey Twitter. From the future. <laughs> Jesus part three. Uh, <laughs> we should, oh, I wish we could have him on. What? Rumor break? No, Ryan. Ryan oh, Lacey? Yeah, I'm I would to, I was but, just trying to sit here and think of a way we sorry, could do it. We said the same thing. You see, Ryan, <laughs> you see, you see. Ryan, Ryan break, yeah. Ryan, Ryan, break. Ryan break, Ryan, it's, see, yeah, it's a lot. Ryan anyway, break. I'd well, love to, I'd love to, um, I'd love to have him on. I wonder if have equipment at the moment. We'll it'll try, it'll it'll change. Do you think his tweet is laced with the truth? <laughs> I think it is. I think it's got some soul to it. Yeah. I think he's telling the truth. <laughs> There's no way he could be Ryan. Sh- Shujo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the arch support is there. I'm trying to yeah, oh, oh, shoe, shoe joke. joke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a shoe oh, joke. Yeah. Adam does, does he have the platform? So you're oh, still oh, going. These really, oh. these really lack soul, Adam. Oh, yeah, I already yeah, made already that joke. That. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, I'll have to cut yeah. out my tongue then. Oh. Ah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's really good. I like that yeah. one. I was gonna make a tongue joke too, so well done. Well I done. Dip my toe in. Uh, a, um, Mike Babcock said today he clarified a little bit. Chris Johnston asked him, and Mike kind of laughed and said, "Well, I'm hopeful." Mm. Confident and hopeful. Confident and hopeful. And he said, "Willie's a good player. He's a good player. He said he's a good person. Yep. Good, good teammate. Loves hockey. He loves Lo- hockey. Loves hockey. What does that mean? Do you think Mike Babcock is trolling the Toronto media? I think he's humoring the Toronto media because he doesn't must know be what to fun. say. It must be fun for him playing hockey. Oh no, well yeah, that. <laughs> I was but like, like it I must. Mean, yeah. There must be moments with Mike Babcock because the you know the thing is the team is really good and they are winning and they have been winning for the last you know two and a half years." Um, for Mike, it must be fun to be kind of like to, to play with these guys a little bit. Yeah. And I, I am not really as sure. I don't think Babcock knows as much as people think. Um, why would he not know that? I think he would know that he'd probably be in on it and he maybe, you know, walks up to Dubas and goes, where are we at? And he goes, ah, close. All right. Good. And I, and I think that's about it. Like, did you hear the other day when he's like, uh, there's no timeline on Matthews. And a few people took that and went, what? That means he's going to be out for much longer. No, it means Babcock historically has no patience for injury questions because he's not a doctor. And that's what he says. Yeah. And, and that- it's good. It's at some point in recent memory, like I want to say around like 2015, it's like the word just got out around the National Hockey League. Coaches, don't you say a thing. If a player is hurt, shut up until he is medically cleared to come back. Because if it were up to the coaches, he'd be like, you know, what are you at, like 90%? Yeah, I'm at about 90%. All right, you're in. If it was up to the coach, of course they'd be Well, in. and that's a team policy thing. The Leafs have a thing about coaches. They The coaches don't ask the player. They ask the medical staff. Mm-hmm. Is he ready? They don't go to the player because they don't want to put pressure on the player. Mike Babcock said that in multiple press conferences. He said, "We, I do not have dialogue with the player about their injury. When they're ready, they're ready, and the medical staff tells me. So it's ridiculous to ask Babcock, hey, when's Matthews coming yeah. back? Yeah, but, you know, His maybe, focus is on other things. He has maybe to coach the team. Quote. He does have to focus on the team that's actually there. Yeah. Maybe he gives you Anyways, the Leafs just tweeted, oh. and it's oh, about nice. the FaZe clan and... Fortnite and Fortnite and them playing and controller or keyboard. Anyways, oh my god, that was a lot of actions per second. Yeah, no, the they're really good. 
these professional gamers. Who who would have thunk it? Anyone who doesn't think that's like an actual skill, like a sport, like you do it. You try to beat them. It's got to be. A, it's a skill at least. No, no. Are they a, athletes? I don't know. I wouldn't but say it's a skill. athlete, but some sort of competitor. Mm-hmm. Is a professional chess player an athlete? That's a tough one. Like, what's the cutoff? Like, baseball is an interesting one because you... <laughs> if you're David Ortiz. <laughs> I mean, but he's strong. Mm -hmm. And he uses hand-eye coordination. And there's a lot of timing. Well, okay, this involves timing. Yeah. It, you know, up almost as much running <laughs> as being a designated hitter. Sure. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. But, okay, so if you're in a strongman competition, are you an athlete? And your just job is to just lift things. If you're an I'd Olympian yes. and you're a weightlifter, are you an athlete? This is chess and gaming is really interesting. That's if what's screwing it up for me. If you play table tennis, are you an athlete? Yes. 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 Adam, if you're a weightlifter, are you an athlete? I mean, yeah. It's there's a physical element to it, and there's mm. a mental element to it. So why not? If you're a professional gamer, are you an athlete? Yes, because there is a physical element to it, and there's a mental element to it, is and it's physical, a competition. Is the physical element sitting in hand your eye? Hand eye? Absolutely. Okay. There was a. Um, don't tell anybody that plays online anything mm -hmm. online. Don't tell me that that is not really effing it's difficult. It's extremely hard. Like anybody that tells you that that it's not is full of shit. Don't listen mm -hmm. to them. I won two Diamond League games in NHL 19 ones today, and both times I went yes. Did you really? Because I didn't expect to win. Diamond, Diamond League? League? Diamond uh, Diamond tier. Is, What's that, the, is that the highest? I've never played yeah, once. Yeah, well, you got to win. You got to win. Uh, there's tier four, tier three, tier two, and then there's diamond, mm. and then you got to win in diamond. And you've won twice today. I've I've I don't know, maybe played a dozen games to and get there. I'm I'm usually money in the bank to get to diamond. Winning in diamond is really hard mm. for me. Okay. And then you'll see the daily leader. It's like he's played 49 games today and won 45 diamond wins. And I'm like, get the f what do you what do you do mm. like for life? How, a, how have you played 50 <laughs> games today? He's probably a kid. He's homesick from school, and his that's mom left no, him there. That's no kid. <laughs> that's that's a freak. No, it's probably definitely a it's kid. It's probably definitely a... Yeah, like, probably. I was pretty good at playing for 40 hours straight when I was 15. I still... Which, which <laughs> NHL was it? There was one year where I didn't have much work, and I just decided I'm going to get really good at chill. And I friggin' destroyed it and got really good, and then I lost 12 straight. Um, didn't, hot you get up to, didn't you get up to fourth tier or something like that? Yeah, like back no, it was, it was three. It was, and I just kept going, and then I lost twelve straight, and I just never. I don't think I've played it again. I think it's been three years. There's a couple guys who were on the crew at BT at that time, and I told them that, and they're like, "Oh, we're tier one." Yeah, they were, they were tier oneers, and they would they Which would can't even be fun. They would get in, and tier they would like avoid playing because they didn't want to get kicked yeah, out. Yeah, lose yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's so hard. What was the uh, was it battleship battle the one you played with your clan? Oh, uh, Battlefront, Battlefront, Star Wars. You guys got pretty good at that. We got good at the first one. The second one sucked because you could buy your way. You could buy all these star cards that would make your player a lot better. So what the YouTubers who were smart did was, okay, so it'll, it, it apparently, so you the game costs like a, 150 bucks, and then you spent like four grand to max out your cards. So these- $4,000. Yeah. Oh, this, there was a huge controversy about this. <laughs> so these YouTubers would go in and they would just, or these rich kids yeah. would go in and they would buy these cards and like, you would be walking around trying to earn your cards. Mm -hmm. So you have to get 150 kills for one gun upgrade. And so your gun would be kicking back and it would be like missing people or whatever. And you'd see this these beasts come in and yeah. just fucking wreck you. And and the second Star Wars game just it was so it had so much potential. It was so well done, but except for that part, and I've just I haven't played in a year. I just fuck it. I hate um, this game so you much. You weren't willing to just drop some cash? Fuck no. And then they Why changed not? it. Then they changed it. And they're like, oh, it's earn only. But everybody uh, else that bought their cards can keep them. Uh, and then and then it was like, it's earn only, but we're going to bring the stats down, to the, like the, the amount of kills. So you used to do 150 kills to get like a gun upgrade, um, like to get like a scope or so it wouldn't kick back or whatever. Right. And, and then they lowered it to 50 after I had done all the 150 kills. And I was like, fuck this. <laughs> you fuck you. three times the amount of oh, everything. I, yeah. oh, Adam, how do you feel about this? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody that's played that game, you know. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It happened to me in Hut. I was in tier 10, which is the the first, it's the one you start on. 
I had my starter pack. The highest rated player I had was like Ryan Reeves on my top line wing. And some frigging child <laughs> is in tier 10 with like Datsuk, Bobby Orr, and like Kessel, <laughs> and, and I think they had uh, Pavel Bure. Yeah. Like they had an alumni. Yeah, yeah one of the old guys. And of course, uh, believe it or not, I lost. <laughs> believe it or not, I got Ryan, Ryan Reeves demolished. Didn't, Ryan Reeves didn't come through and character you to a win? <laughs> I only lost by like one. So that kid should be oh, ashamed. Yeah. Wow, Not me, really the was. grown man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to yell and swear at that child like ninja. Hey. Hey. You know what it is? You know what season it is? Fall. Sally season. Oh. Come on. Can you... Uh, Come on, Steve. By the you... way, till 11.59 tonight, you can get $20 off your purchase of a Budweiser... Red light. Oh, All you need is. to do is Budweiser.ca, buy the red light. $20 off if you use the promo code DANGLE. That's till 11.59 tonight, Friday. Make sure you get it up there. By the way, if you're just finding out about this, how come you don't follow us on Instagram? We already posted about it. Steve? Yeah. Steve, can you describe one of your NHL one goals? And then we'll sell you. Oh, okay. Ryan Reeves goals. <laughs> That's well, hot. I dumped, I chased, and I slashed. <laughs> and then I scored and then I went, to him. <laughs> He does the goal horn. You've never heard the Ryan Reeves no, goal I horn? No, I never have. It's, okay, it's a thing. It's an awkward sound to make when you don't understand the context. Uh, so anyway. We speak for all the people that don't get Steve's meta jokes. <laughs> Here comes Dangle. He's going into the corner, and the guy in front of him laid down on the ice so that Dangle tripped over him. <laughs> but it's okay. The other guy tripped over him, too. Dangle gets up and gets to the puck first. He makes a mad dash. Spinning moves. Spins. Fires. Cheap shot on the blocker side. Scores! <laughs> Dangle! <laughs> Dangle! He's going to Diamond, baby! He's going for the half wood, half metal trophy! Dangle! Sensation sweep of the nation! The slush pants bandit is back at it again with the slush pants. Do you have slush pants? I do. Mm -hmm. And a leaf toque. Ah, nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, okay, so I'm a great player. You get into Tim and Sid yesterday, <laughs> and you have to talk about a bunch of stuff that's not hockey related. There's no real <laughs> hockey news. Yeah. How much are you sweating before that Weidman trade? Uh, a little. Well, I knew they wanted to talk a little bit more hockey. They understand uh, my weaknesses and wanted to play to my strengths. Um, Good coaches. Basketball is one of those things where, like, I'm like. I know nothing about it. And then if you get me warmed up with a couple things, I'm like, oh, okay, no, I actually do know a little bit. Like enough to yeah. hold Hard not some to. If you, if you follow any pop culture, it's hard not to know about basketball. Yeah, I think so. And then football. <laughs> I was useless. I was used. Guys are making jokes about, like, the Bears quarterback. Like, look, watch this guy. And I'm like, I've literally never heard of that human being. I don't know who that is. <laughs> and then making fun of the Lions guy. I don't know who that is. Oh, you know Stafford. how the Lions are. Yeah, sure. I believe you. And, hey, you know how the Lions are so good on Thanksgiving. I'm like, are they? Yeah. He's all those Lions. How, how they do. <laughs> like, I didn't know anything. So when that trade finally broke, you were like, ooh, a oh. thing. That was great. We had we had something extra to talk about, and uh, I mean, it was. Savard says he's serious. By the way, he just responded. Did he say that? What did he say? Oh. Says he's dead serious. We got to okay. All right. Follow up question. No. Are they, are they close? <laughs> okay. One sec. I gotta. I gotta. You. You talk for a second. Okay. Um. Can we should probably read Mark Savard's tweet. Yeah, I guess. He said $6.9 million gets it done. That's what he basically said. Someone talk. Um, McKenzie followed up the uh, 6.9 average, and he said, for all the 6.9 AAV on a long-term deal, remember what Cap Friendly and we were talking about last week. Toronto could do a long-term deal for $7 million across the board and have a much bigger cap hit this year and much lesser cap hit in the so-called out years. By the way, you, did you know that the Leafs have the third most cap space in the league this season? They have like 16 mil right now. <laughs> <laughs> They're, I think, still third in the NHL or fourth in the NHL, and they have the third most cap space. I think they're going to be okay. They'll be fine. They're going to be okay. I mean, that changes basically as soon as the season's over. It'll be tight. It's going to be tight, but, but it's I think not they'll bad. be okay. Um, so, yeah, Mark Savard, 
you think farted he farted on an art What did you what did you write back to him? I just said close, savvy insider. <laughs> That's it. Uh, anyway, getting back to the real star of the show, me, Tim and Sid. So great. Was it cool? Was, was it like was it, was it so cool? So I, to explain, like you walk in, what do you do? I I walk in and uh, the pre-show meeting, which Jesse was part of for a very long time. Um, Funny that you're there after he's not there. I know. I know the timing of it was terrible. Like yeah, a week later, a week difference, yeah. and you would have been there. Figures, but um, yeah, they. Uh, Every everything at the pre-show meeting sounded like it was oddly directed at me. <laughs> wow! Uh, all right, here's how it works, and well, and it should have been yes. because I didn't know. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, it was really good. Uh, Sid's like, "Hey, c- come down on the calf. We'll, we'll get some lunch." And I'm having chicken fingers with him because, of course, I didn't even want chicken fingers. But I'm like, I'm with Sid Sixero. It's like smoking a blunt with Snoop Dogg. You, you got to do it, right? Yeah. It's his thing. Uh, does and he then, eat that every day? Does he eat chicken? He does. Probably. Yeah, no, it's a it's a thing. He has a, a Coke. I think he switched to Diet Coke. It was a Coke and yesterday, just regular. It was a regular Coke? Okay, so he's off the diet. Coke and chicken fingers. He has a chicken fingers and fries from the uh, calf every single day. It's not a lot, except on days when it's like holiday and we have to work. Then he goes to McDonald's. Oh, wow. Yes. And he gets his little he's medicine cup full of uh, hot sauce. Uh huh. Yeah, he's methodical. He's a, he's a man of habit. He comes in the same day ev- every time. Leaves same time, has same thing for lunch. Wow. Unbelievable human being. In and out. Oh, just so brilliant. And like everyone, it became pretty obvious pretty quickly. If I fail, it'll be my fault. Mm-hmm. Like they really do a good job of putting you in a position to succeed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sort of thing. And like. Well, that makes a good show, right? You have to, you, you need that. Yeah. And like. Uh, they should have called it Good Show. Yeah. The Good Show. Because <laughs> they like you that. You see, because. Um, <laughs> And yeah, it, it, I had this moment, it was like either a couple minutes before or after the beginning of the show, where I was just like, oh, we're just talking. Oh, that's it. We yeah. just have to talk. Like, it's weird how you forget that, like, so quickly, and I'm like, I think I think we'll be okay. And uh, I, it went so much better than I thought. Unbelievably way better than I thought. What? Well, because no, in your head, I, I know lead, myself. leading up in your head, I know that it was a complete disaster and like the television station would burn down. Sportsnet would be no longer existing today yeah. in Steve's head. If, Basically. If, I didn't <laughs> want to embarrass Sportsnet nationally. If what Steve <laughs> thought actually would happen versus what happened yeah. was always the case, there would be. <laughs> Earth would be gone. It'd be yeah. over. I was a Catholic Italian Eight times, times over. Yeah, yeah, like, like not just once. <laughs> you, know, yeah. you want to talk about anxieties? <laughs> just a ball. It's a, it's a good thing you can't predict the future because it wouldn't be good. Mm, no, <laughs> bad things happen. I'd be like Professor Trelawney. You would be. Tiffany. Like Adam, you're not surprised it went well. Like here, no. oh, Steve's well, gonna be okay. on Tim and Sid. I know it's gonna go well. Here's the thing. Ah. Yeah, broadcasting is really just talking. The thing that Steve does is he re- he records himself talking. On a, on a camera and then Alone. edits it together and then he goes live to tape which essentially is what this is uh, meaning that we basically record the podcast it's not live per se because we're not streaming it but it basically then just gets put into a file and uploaded right mm-hmm. like I mean there's not uh, there's a couple edits every once in a while but there's not like this is like s- stream of consciousness shit for two hours ev- every two days during the week like I, I think you're going to be okay for the, for a five to seven minute segment yeah but how often are you like oh, how about those lions you know? Well, I How noticed that. I mean, when we were doing sports net radio, I was like, uh, right, baseball. Well, like, basketball, <laughs> we did really well because I crammed, and there was a huge story, and then there was a baseball Thank God for Kawhi. Like, and Adam. <laughs> and Adam. <laughs> what do you think? Adam. Because I don't know anything. How about Adam? And, uh, <laughs> last night on Vince Carter, you kind of let Sid handle, and you kind of just reacted yeah. to his opinion on it. Yeah, and that Which, was because we sort of talked about it beforehand. Yeah. Like the by the original, way, Sid was totally right. That was the saddest thing I've ever it seen. Was what? No, and I acknowledge <laughs> that. I, I, no, I thought it went well. Because hey, Vince, take five shots. Yeah, Go take ahead. five. And dude, oh, they just let him. It. He missed all five. <laughs> oh, just run to the rim and dunk Slam. it. Slam! Literally, I did it. Literally, <laughs> point five seconds left. It was embarrassing. Yes. 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 <laughs> he missed like, the shot before that led to the dunk, and everybody just. Let let him get the rebound. It was so sad. But it happened against the Raptors. <laughs> oh, you, you held your own because you're like, well, it had to be against the Raptors. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, but like I didn't I took the other side reluctantly. Yeah. I thought it was a little bit pathetic too. Mm-hmm. It was nice that it was against the Raptors. Would have been nicer if he had sunk the shot 
five or six shots before he did. <laughs> yeah, like it was a little dude. It literally point shaped. Well, and I wonder. Like, I wonder. They allowed too. him to score. The Raptors celebrated. <laughs> you, I yeah. would love. I would love to hear the mic. I want to hear the 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 courtside mic. Let him do it. Just let him dunk. Has to be a dunk. They probably told Vin, dunk it! Does anybody know a seven-foot French guy? Anybody? Yeah. Anybody? Stop shooting from, like, a few feet away! You're not gonna make it! Dunk it! Can yeah. you still dunk? Um, yeah, there were some there's some really good moments. I was really impressed. Yeah. We, were watching it. we were very, very proud of you. You pressed the buttons a lot. I did. Yeah. Man. Did they tell you to do that, or were you no. just like, I'm doing that? I No, it was... Every new person who ever came on the show, that's all they did. They'd sit there for like 10 minutes and just press all of them. <laughs> Which would have been super annoying because it goes through everyone's headset and yeah. the loudspeakers uh -huh. in the studio. <laughs> just every five seconds. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, I kind of believe. Um, there, there was a very underrated one that I wish I used more. Um, yeah, and they didn't even tell me about it. There's just this iPad sitting in front of me. And at one point I went, is this the soundboard? And then they just kind of went, yes. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, ding, 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 is the ding. Is the studio bigger or smaller than it looks on TV? Way, way smaller. It's like a closet. Well, yeah, I was, I was shocked, and that was the first time I'd ever been. I'd never seen it. Um, yeah, I actually way, haven't, way I haven't ever seen it, but I know, looking at studios, they always look enormous and they're tiny, mm -hmm. tiny, I think, I think tiny, this tiny. Room, right? I mean, it would be a little bigger than this room. No, 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 no. But oh I mean, this, this room looks deep. <laughs> oh yeah, it's camera. Not, yeah, it's not. No, that's it's <laughs> yeah, from wall to wall. How long is that? Ten feet? If that. Like, I probably could lie down and reach. Just yeah. lie down on the floor. Just, yeah, it's, it's definitely a, about eight, seven. Yeah, yeah. It's, it is not a big room. Um, but that, I think, made it easier. Hmm. Like, it was because it, it was tighter, more intimate. The crew just openly laughs. Like, I didn't As know. As they should. Yeah. Any oh, good show. Like, I thought you had to, you know, had to, like, stifle it for TV. I don't know. No. I don't yeah, know. It was funny. I, I it sometimes does make it better. We used to listen to um uh on in Halifax we ran um a couple shows and one of them was American Top Forty with Ryan Seacrest. And one of the things they used to do, and I don't think they still do this on the show, but they Ryan would make a joke and they'd like insert a laugh. What do you mean? So they he'd like he'd like make a make a joke about it because he's really busy, right? So he doesn't he, he you could tell he was like running in to do American Top Forty and then running out to do American Idol. This is like, you know, five, ten years ago. And uh and then it would be like He'd be like talking about something, and like it, he'd make like a, a a sort of a lame joke, and then you'd hear ha, 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 in the background as though there's like an audience there. Oh. It was really awkward, but yeah, those Tim and Sid ones are actually like real. They're real laughs. Yeah, it caught me off guard the first time it happened. I, what, I, you could probably even see if you have the footage. I like looked. What like, is what? it like sitting next to a volcanic Sid Six Zero rant? Uh, you just all you want to do is keep up. All you want to do is keep up. Uh, and he establishes a, a tough pace. That's a tough pace, man. Mm -hmm. And you got to learn when to go at him and when to be the concerned parent, which that's what I turned into on the Vince thing. I was like, oh, oh gosh, Sid, you know, go easy on him, <laughs> please. And he's talking about Willie, and I'm like, actually, stupid idiot. Um, Tim, sorry, not Tim, uh, Doug McClain came on the show. And yeah, I hope Doug, I didn't rub him the wrong way. Doug McClain. I might have. Started off by saying, "Yeah, you know, the never catch ice surfing and uh, yeah, whatever else you do." This was a great joke. Yeah, it yeah. was. It, or no, I don't even think he said ice surfing. He's like, "Whatever your show is." Yeah. <laughs> and then I go, uh, "Hey, when you have an expert on, uh, you got to ask for their expertise." And I know you're an expert in this field, so Doug, when's the right time to fire a GM? <laughs> and uh, he handled that pretty well. And he gave you a did straight answer for a guy who like. Doesn't really know him to ask that See, question. I wouldn't have gone there. Did, what did Sid say after about that question? I, I don't know. I think he liked it. Did he? I mean, Sid's not the one to be like, now, now, be cordial. Mm. Like, I think he wants the most entertaining stuff. It was a good. That was a good one. I was I like, I was, was like, pretty oh. good. I was gonna ask Mitch the question. I was gonna do it. And if they regretted it, I'd be like, well, you shouldn't have asked me <laughs> to do the show. <laughs> well, you shouldn't have asked me. So, what do you think of the Chris Weidman trade? As it's, I know it's a tiny, minor deal, yeah. but the the Oilers still do get a a, a a guy who can skate and move a puck on the right side for nothing. It, uh, who I shit talks coaches and Ubers? Yeah, yeah. That like was that the seemed, thing. That's definitely why that trade was made. Oh, uh, for sure. And what I what I said yesterday on the show, like the guys who did the most talking were Matt Duchesne and Chris Weidman. Well, Matt Duchesne's like a top ten score in the league right now, mm -hmm. and Chris Weidman. Not going to trade him. 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, sorry, bud. You're not Matt Duchesne. Um, Ottawa got something for a guy they clearly didn't like and didn't think had an, uh, a well, future with the organization, <laughs> which is a good thing. Conditionally. It's conditional six. Oh, is it? Oh, I didn't know that. What's and the it, condition? Yeah, it was, I don't know, but I know it's a conditional six. Oh, Isn't interesting. it a conditional six? Okay, so that must have broken after the show okay. then. Yeah, let's, look, let's, let's, like, let's verify that, but I'm pretty sure it's a conditional six. <laughs> sure. Adam Wilde says things. Let's it's check a, let's on them. Let's text Mark Savard. By the way, Ryan Lacey. Come on, Mr. Dubas. One hour left. Don't make me look like a liar, please. All I was trying to do was help. Don't want Leafs Nation to hate me considering I have a lot of respect for them. Oh, Lace is out! Hashtag! Lace is... He, he's not Ryan. I want to get that going. He's not right. He's not right. Like right. Here it is. is. He? Uh, conditions. Edmonton. Edmonton. Impressmenton. Impressmenton transferred the condition from the Yurbeck. Yurbeck trade. Yurbeck. Jakob Yurbeck. Yurbeck trade. Because it's actually the Blues pick. The sixth round pick upgrades to a fifth selection if Yarabek appears in 50 or more regular season games for the Blues in 2018-2019. So let's check so out how many So that matters for the Senators now. Yes. Yer- if Yerbeck- is Yarabek on the Blues? Yes. So if he appears in uh, oh, he's down the AHL. Yeah, so he's played one happen. game so it's going to be a six round pick. It's going to be a six round <laughs> pick. So, you know, if you're the Sens, I think you want anything in the news cycle that isn't the LeBreton Flats thing. So I guess that was right. good for them. Which we're getting to next. Peter Shirelli, of course. And if you're Peter Shirelli, uh, you want to look busy. You want to look like you're doing something. And Ken Hitchcock might have even said, get me another option on D. I doubt he was like, get me Chris Weidman. <laughs> but, you know, get me another option. Um, I like the move better for the Oilers um, than the Sens, to be honest. It's pretty ho-hum. I don't think it's much to write uh, write about. Um, if you l- you can look at it even as like Yarabek for Weidman, right? Mm-hmm. That's fine. Well, and this is so so we have Oilers, we have extra Oilers and extra Sens news. I am using really this boring trade to 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 springboard us into the not boring shit. That now you hang on to your thing because I'm going to set up your okay. thing. The first thing that we heard yesterday was that the city of Ottawa told reporters that Eugene and his company need to get it together. Uh, because they have six weeks and then they will lose their exclusivity. And I'm going to read something that was posted by Travis Yost because this fully explains everything. And I believe it is from the Ottawa Citizen. It is. Behind the scenes, three sources with direct knowledge of the negotiations characterized a major roadblock as Melnick, whose bargaining tactics have bedeviled government reps and those inside Rendezvous who have being involved in the talks. I guess Rendezvous is the other partner involved. Uh, no one is quite sure what Melnick's endgame is on LeBreton Flats, they say. They don't know what his goal is. Uh, the sources... Well, what? I, I, I just don't understand that. The sources Build who, an arena. The sources who didn't want to be identified because they aren't authorized to speak publicly about the negotiations said Melnick has been trying to avoid paying for the arena. The expectations were spectacularly unrealistic, one source says. Now, that was yesterday. Now, before you get to your thing, Steve. Uh, it's not much of a thing. Well, it is a th- it is a bit of a thing. Okay. Um, actually, read your thing first. This will work. Well, I just said close, savvy insider, and he just responded, "No, I'm a future color commentator." Ah, uh, ah. Uh, so ah. Uh, now confusing response. I don't think he's good at texting. Um. <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe you should learn to put on your elbow pads the right way. Oh. There is a group. If I saw, yeah, I, why is he even responding to me? He shouldn't. There is a group of local business leaders in Ottawa. October 11th, they sent an they sent a letter to NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman that provided uh, and provided Thursday to the Globe and Mail. A spokesperson said he represented a large number of concerned leaders in the law, banking and finance, real estate, building and trades, labor, construction, information technology, tourism and hospitality, First Nations, philanthropy, public opinion, science, healthcare, government and the media, all sectors Jesus. that make up Canada's national capital region. They call themselves the Capital Built Task Force and they told Bettman they wholeheartedly endorsed the project in the LeBreton Flats, as well as the senators moving downtown. They expressed, however, serious concerns over the intentions of Senators owner Eugene Melnick and whether or not he is committed to moving the team downtown. They provided a survey undertaken by Abacus Data uh, in which 60% of the responding Ottawans uh, would support NHL Commissioner Gary Bettman and the NHL getting involved to ensure that this project moves ahead on time. Bettman responded October 23rd, 
thanking them for the letter. He said, while I cannot speak for the senators, only Eugene Melnick can, I am happy to chat with concerned constituents. Please feel free to give me a call. So this so, guy's a nightmare. Yes. and Who likes him? And then here's, here's what happened today. This is what I thought you were going to actually read, Steve. But it's oh. okay. <laughs> what happened today was Ottawa Senators owner Eugene Melnick suing partner in seven for $700 million over failed downtown arena bid. Now, remember, Eugene Melnick has six weeks before this deal exclusivity expires, meaning that somebody else can come in and bid. Yeah, that so means it's, he's it's suing not, the partner already yeah. for a failed arena bid that's not failed yet. But yeah. I guess it's failed. It's not. It's technically not done, done, Tom done, done. Um, but you see another owner. You see how I connected the two? That's a real kick in the pants. Oh. I'm making foot jokes still. Oh, oh. you said pants. pants. No, I said kick. kick. Oh, my God. That's pointy chewed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, I'm mean, a step in the right direction. Right, you know I'm, trying, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm um, trying. Woo. Uh, Boy, where were we? Yeah, the sins are boned, huh? Um, I think that oh, this... they this, shouldn't have done that. This deal is for sure falling through. And Eugene Melnick wanted the city of Ottawa to pay for it. They're not going to. Now he's suing his business partner. How long until they are no longer in Ottawa? I think they're going to stay. Gonna I, I think they're going to stay in Ottawa. I yeah. think if you keep the... Listen, if, you, if the NHL bends over backwards and gets kicked in the teeth consistently to save the Arizona Coyotes. Yeah. You sort of have to do the same with the Senators, right? And no offense to Coyotes fans, but you know that's what happened. The yeah. Ottawa Gary Senators... Batman was like hanging off the edge of a cliff with his pinky finger whatever they supporting did, the Coyotes. Whatever they did to get rid of Donald Sterling in the NBA is what they need to do to get rid of Eugene Melnick. Now, different reasons to get rid of him, but get rid of him all the same. They found the... Get rid of him. They got the wrong Uber tape, is what you're saying. Yeah, mm. the Uber tape is. <laughs> they should they should look at that Uber tape and go, ah, everything that we thought is confirmed. Yeah, Adam, are you sure on this one? <laughs> what do you mean? What? No. I honestly think. I mean, I don't think Eugene Melnick is well intentioned. I think we've. I think actions speak louder than words. Yeah. I don't think he cares. I think he wants taxpayers in Ottawa to pay for the downtown arena, and if they're not going to pay for it, he what? What is the impetus for Eugene Melnick? Yeah. To because he's going to make he's going to be he's going to cut even on this team. He is going to make even with the with the payments or whatever. He gets to say to his rich friends that he owns an NHL team. He gets sure. season tickets. What does he care that the arena is outside? He has a car to drive him there anyway. It's it's he does not there's nothing in this for Eugene Melnick personally. So why would he do it? And that's how he looks at it. That's how he looks at everything. Well, well okay. I, I hope he understands as a businessman that a downtown arena would drive more business to sure the senators and thus business to his bank account. I'm sure he understands that. He but I think he wants, I think he's looking at it like by the time this arena pays itself back, remember, the guy's like 60 years old. Yeah. I oh, will be dead. He must be older. I will be dead. That guy is not my dad. No, age. but think Stop. about it. He will not make the money back on this arena in his lifetime. And well, that's not an unfair here. thing to say. This is a 25-year business Eugene plan. Eugene Melnick is 59. I told you. What? He's 59. It's a hard 59, but it's 59. <sighs> it's a hard 59. Boy, um, listen. 59. Here, let me let me go back, okay? Let's, let's step out of the situation a little bit, okay? So when we bring up someone over and over and over and over and over again on the show in a negative way, I like to every now and then reset and go, wait a sec. Are we being fair? Are we picking on the guy? So, like, for example, Peter Shirelli. Bring him up all the time. Critical of what he does with the Oilers. I like to praise the moves he makes that sure. I think are worth praising. Yeah. There's also a really good chance some of his decisions in Edmonton are uh, influenced by people above him, maybe even ownership. So which Robert of Knicks, maybe? Could be him. Could be Daryl Cates. The 80s Oilers, because they won cups. We know Daryl Cates is involved. Yeah. We know that from the Yakupov story all those years ago. So, so, got to give him the benefit of the doubt. And that's something that I should maybe mention on the show more often. Enter Eugene Melnick. We have not said a nice thing about this human being. Probably in the entire history of the show. Oh no! Does we, he deserve all of it? We've said... He, we've, he, did, say, I, he did save the Senators, man. I uh -huh. ask... He did. I... Yeah. He saved the Senators in the, in the mid-2000s. Listen, if Eugene but, Melnick but were acting we in good faith... But here we are again. If, so I'm like, I'm because I cannot find a reason to say a nice thing about this guy. If Eugene Melnick I acted find in a thing. good faith ever, 
I'd be cool with it. I'd be like, wow, we've seen a corner turned. This is great. But are you you're asking? No okay, one trusts him. Past predictors. No one trusts or him. Past past actions are the best future predictors. This is what he yeah. does. This is what he does. This is what he is, and this is what he will do. That ain't gonna change. Is is it weird that like? Because I just feel like the Edmonton Arena deal was it was so public that uh, they were getting a whole big bunch of taxpayer money, and the uh, Flames deal was so public that the big issue was public spending why is it all this guy this guy this guy because i haven't really heard anything about like the tax aspect of it all i'm trying to find any little rope to give this guy to grab onto and i just can't find it he's got to get out he's he's got to get out. it's done he's it's done and that's this is the thing like like i I, 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 he won't leave quietly no, of course not. He's not gonna. The NHL. The, the NHL's got to intervene. As much as they are that trying. Got to intervene. As much as the NHL is trying to say, well, that's not our job, and it's not. Our, we can't get involved. Blah, blah, blah. The NHL has to realize, and they know this. Well, they got. They'll, they'll never say put this. Put that but they hockey know this. hall of famer to work. This is. Put him on the case. Bad for business. This is worse for business, by the way, than the con- con- concussion lawsuit. This is the worst thing plaguing the NHL right now. Do you think that Gary Bettman's going to sit back and not do something about this? I don't think so. Enough's enough. Like, oh, I, I want to know what enough's enough is. Well, that's that. That's that. I wonder if Batman's going to say, smarten up. <laughs> Melnick needs to smarten up. I, uh, I feel bad for Sense fans, man. I feel bad. And Ottawa, like, I'm excited <laughs> for the prospect of them getting an arena in a cool little surrounding area. Great. Brand and new. Jack Ottawa's Hughes. a great city. And Jack, well, no, they won't get him. Colorado might. Colorado will get Jack Hughes. Ah. Ah. Don't you? I always forget that, too. Yeah, yeah. I always go, well, they might. Oh, mm-hmm. No, they won't. No, in Ottawa, no. it's booze for Hughes. No. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Booze for Hughes? Yeah, because it's lose for Hughes. It's the hashtag. Yeah. So Wait, are you saying for boo Hughes. like boo No, earns? as in drink. You drink, drink because oh. you're not getting them. See, it's funny like now. Like boo earns. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I was mm. saying boo earns. <laughs> uh, no, I think, I think, man, here's the deal. This is a... Leopards that, do not change city, spots. This is not who this a bad is. City. It's not a bad city. It's not a dull city. Ottawa's got so much potential. Unless you ask people there who, who say it's kind of dull. It's, it's also kind of cold. I like... <laughs> Like it's it's Toronto. No, but Ottawa's so like a, it's like minus twenty today, man. Come it's on. a little colder in Ottawa. Well, yeah, yeah a it's a little further north, uh, and yeah. it's on a, it's on the Rito. So I'm just, it's not that great. Oh. Let's, not, oh. let's not hype it up so much. If Jesse was commissioner, there'd be no Canadian teams. Yeah, they'd all be in Florida. I put them in Texas. the warm climates, you know. Yeah, like, no, I Minnesota. I don't want to go to Ottawa. All the Canadian teams in Minnesota. Why Come put on. a Canadian team in Canada? The fans are going to cheer anyway. Yeah, like, there right? you go. We, we already got the Canadian. Hockey. Yeah, they'll watch it anyway. Let them watch puck. You see, I do think, I do think that Ottawa has all the potential in the world to be a good example of what a good small market team can be. And they all it's let, not don't even get that small. I know, but Steve, it is. It, it is. is small. And, yeah. and the financial aspect of it is the main source of income in Ottawa is government. Mm. So government's not going to come in and sponsor your arena. Government's not going to come in and pay big money for your TV rights. It's government. What you need to do at that point, it's like well, it's like the Green Bay Packers. They're a small market team, but they spend like a big market team because their fans are so invested. They're there every game. They buy all the merchandise. They are insane. And that's what you need to develop in Ottawa. And Ottawa fans are crying out for that. They're screaming for it. Please let us love you. Outside of Thomas Shabbat and a couple other players. Players. Wait, what's Thomas Shabbat's name? Hot Sambacho. There you go. Outside of Hot Sambacho, is Brian five or six the most likable thing about this team right now? Yes. <laughs> I like yes. dead ass. Like <laughs> I'm i I'm so serious. Like that is I'm trying to think of things I can compliment them on. Mm. Things I think they do well. They're God bless their social media team. They're, They're trying. They have nothing to work with. God bless them. Offering a press pass or whatever it is that they've given him to Brian five or six is isn't he like the in arena host? Well, I mean practically, he's practically the mascot, and by year's end he might be head coach. Him and Spartacat just tag team in the mascot. Why not? I doubt they're paying him. Me too. How do they pay Spartacat? Well, I'm sure they pay him in in. Um, 
<laughs> Andrew Free Hammond left behind his McDonald's coupons. <laughs> I don't have know. these. But this is the thing, right? Like, you in Ottawa have a pretty major sponsor for the arena in Canadian Tire. Uh, I'm sure that deal will come up, and when the new arena is done, maybe you do another one or whatever. But there is money there. There's potential for spending there. Are you ever going to make money like the Leafs? No. Are there ways to win when you don't have money like the Leafs? Absolutely. How about the Jets? What's what's bigger in terms of population? Now, the Jets Edmonton are different, though. Or Edmonton or Ottawa? One of the richest Edmonton. people in the world owns the Jets, yeah. though. That's the thing. Okay. You know that, that's right? Not, yeah. Sorry? One of the richest people in the world owns the Jets. So I guess that's different. Yeah. That's an owner like, that's who's an, like, I just want to have a team. Yeah. Like, that's like your top 25 richest person in the world. Oh. Yeah. Lucky Thompson them. family. Thompson family. The Lucky population money. of Edmonton is 932,000 as of 2016. The population of Ottawa is 934,000 as of different, 2000. Different economic situation. Different. So, different, different, different. A lot more private enterprise in Edmonton. 2,000 people. Steve Dangle is correct, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, they're about the same, right? But yeah, different. different. And that's fine. Okay, every market has challenges. Every market. Every stinking market. Especially in the NHL. So find a way to make it work. And what's such. I want. Listen. Whenever we talk about this, the Eugene Melnick situation specifically as it relates to the Sens, I hope, like it's like it's like me with Brandon Sod. I hope that nobody thinks that I hate Brandon Sod. I hope that nobody thinks that I hate the Ottawa Senators. No, I don't you, even hate Eugene Melnick. You do I just don't hate like Tom Wilson. Oh well, no, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> I don't even hate Tom Wilson. I don't like Tom Wilson's actions S- most Twitter. of the time. I don't like Eugene Melnick, Melnick's actions. I want Eugene to succeed. I want this deal to go through. Nah. I, we everybody nah. does. Everybody does. Nah. You, you're Melnick telling me if Eugene see. Melnick didn't have like nah, a, a Charles Melnick Dickens to... Christmas Carol story where three ghosts of hockey pass came and visited him <laughs> and then he woke up the next morning and bought an enormous turkey for the town of Ottawa <laughs> and signed the deal in the LeBreton Flats. My boy, go and buy the biggest spread you can find. You think he's going to have that? Life? I think so. I think so. He's... Merry Christmas. What <laughs> <laughs> The ghosts of Senators past. 1970 Senators guy. Oh my God, Adam. That's just, hilarious. No, the, my time for uh, cheering for Melnick uh, was years ago, and I'm just not anymore. I'm cheering for the Senators. But if you Senators, want to turn a corner. I'm cheering for the... He's not going to. He's not going to. So, the, throw that out the window. I'm cheering for the Senators. I'm cheering for the Sens fans. I'm cheering for Ottawa. Not that guy. Bye. Get out. Get out. You're not wanted. You're not wanted. There's no money to be made here, and there's nothing to be swindled. Be gone. Isn't it so clear that that's what it is? Or, no, it's the media. Do you think it's the media? I mean, I would definitely kick Brent Wallace, one of the nicest people in the industry, off the plane. No. I'm going to bury you, kid. Allegedly. No, I'm... <laughs> that's the quote, allegedly. I'm going to bury you. Guy with a full head of silver hair. I don't think he called him kid. <laughs> I don't know. I just said it there. Brent Wallace just has that youthful look to him. So I just, even with the silver hair, he sort of got silver that. Silver fox. Yeah. yeah. Hockey's George Clooney. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I think he's even gotten into fights with like Ian Mendez, who's also well liked. And, and who could, I, like, I just <laughs> can't imagine. I'm just trying to imagine, like that sentence is silly. Fighting with Ian Mendez. <laughs> it's like, unbelievable. There's there's a small pantheon of people in hockey where I'm like, okay, if you're mean to this person, you're an asshole. Like, Paul Hendrick, Jack Armstrong, it, well, Jack Armstrong's not hockey, but whatever. Uh, Ian Mendez. People shit post Paul Hendrick more than I thought. Now that I've, I've, I've been following him for a year, I'm like, I Paul Hendrick gets a lot of like mean tweets, He's and I'm like, why? He's the nicest man. He is the nicest man. I will. I'm, over time, I'm slowly evolving into you. You haven't said it for a while, and I say it every show now. He's the greatest. He's the nicest. You got the job shadow. I did. How I did. That? It was cool. Uh, the feature comes out sometime next week on the uh, Maple Leafs channels. But uh, uh, Henny's like, he's just a wicked guy. Mm. He's just wicked. Like he's cool, and he's always got candy in the press box. And you'll have, you'll actually see CJ and James Myrtle and Mike Zeisberger and all those guys are. They, I, I interviewed them all about him. And just what they have to say about it is really cool. Have you ever asked him about Hennessy? I never did ask him. You about should him. have asked him about Hennessy. Wow. What, yeah. yeah. Actually, if he knows J.R. Smith. <laughs> if he cares about well, I would like to know. That's a, you know, I mean, it's a solid point. I ne- should have. Next feature. Yeah. We'll this is why you are a producer, my friend. Yeah, yeah. Paul Hendrick it. was the guy who told them they were ahead. Jim Ralph. No. Jim. <laughs> I get it. 
Uh, <laughs> Jim Ralph uh, actually has a very <laughs> funny bit on Paul Hendrick that I can't wait for you to see. It's a Jim Ralph, very dry, um, but Joe Bowen in the background is laughing because it's so f- the way he takes it is Good. great. So you'll have to you'll love it. You'll love it. Um, you'll love it. Now what we need to do now is move on to the Oilers to the Neilander signing. Not yet. Nothing yet. It's four fifty-five. Four fifty-five, ladies and gentlemen. Five minutes to discuss Edmonton's new line. Are you guys ready for Edmonton's new line? I I know yeah. this line because it's minutes. it's called the identity line. Whoa! Zach Cassian, Kyle Brodziak, and Milan Lucic. Edmonton's new identity line. This is gonna be the third line, right? Uh, that's a good question. Third or fourth? Yeah, because I think Jujar Kara and who else is yeah. who's on the fourth line there? Brodzak was supposed to be on the fourth line and just be a penalty Drake kill. Drake Kajula goes between being on the fourth line and like first. And Connor McDavid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, oh, I'm not sure. I'm trying to remember the name. But Whatever, that's the identity matter. line. Yeah, man. Identity. You can identify them by the names on the back of their jerseys. So, so McLean and really took issue. Ice. Sorry. <laughs> McLean Sorry. really took issue with Ken Hitchcock talking about hold the ice. Wants to see Lucic hold the ice more. Which I think we interpreted to be... He just wants him to beat stand in front of the net man well okay why jvr has his skill set that allows him to score a shit ton of goals from in front of the net but he's also a physical specimen Mm -hmm. joe pavelski has a skill set that allows he's so good pavelski he's so good in front he's very underrated they talk about the eastern bias thing Joe Pavelski needs to be a top five name in that conversation. Agreed. He 100%. is so dominant, dominant, so player. undervalued, incredibly dominant. Almost had the gold medal winning goal in 2010. This close. For America. This close. He would have been on a dollar bill. He would have been Not on a dollar coin, dollar bill. Y- yes. Yes, he would. Right. right. They don't have coins down there. See, they don't believe in metal. They don't. Anyway. Sorry, I don't even remember where I was going with that, Adam. George uh, Washington and Joe Pavelski. Basically, why isn't Lucic those two? Like, he, he's he got the body. He scored before. Just the drop-off is so sudden and shocking. Like, they, he, they talk about the physical condition he's in, and he's in the best shape ever. I don't believe it. No. I simply don't no, believe I, it. I wonder, no. I wonder, too, if... It's if, impossible. If, um, I mean, maybe it's injuries and stuff, too. You always have to keep that in mind. But no, he's in the best physical shape of his life. What they the said. Oilers needed to do a year and a half ago was say, "Okay, listen, Milan, the the game that you used to play doesn't exist anymore." And although you were very effective in that game, and we signed you to play that game, we're now changing the plan. Yep, changing the plan, Milan. Changing the M- and the Milan plan. There it is. It's Gucci, because uh, Milan Gucci, Italian high fashion. Anyway, um, we. Uh, <laughs> You like that? You like yeah. what? The plan should have been, all right, so here is an hour-long tape of JVR. Watch it every night before you go to bed, and then we're going to have you, we're going to we're gonna take shots at the net, and you're going to tip and them. Joe Pavelski. Yeah, like, there's all sorts of practice footage of JVR in front of the net. <laughs> Just do that. And if they, th- that's the problem with the Oilers, though. They wouldn't look at a situation like that and go, let's, mi- let's change this guy's game so at least we can salvage some of this contract and make him a player that's effective for Something's us. They just were like, nope, we're going to keep throwing him out there yeah. and we're going to keep setting him up to fail. Yeah. And it's I, just, I, I, I. There's something wrong. Something's wrong. Well, the, I just don't believe them. Something's wrong with Milan Lucic. You think there's something, you think he's hurt? Or it's one of those, I don't know if it's an injury. There's injuries that heal and there's injuries that are the way things are now. Sort of like Clarkson in the elbow. And, and the back. And the back. Back's a tough one. Like back's one of those ones Does where... He ha- has he had a back injury? I, let you, I, I seem to remember or a something knee or about something? his upper back. Hmm. Uh, I don't, I mean, he's got hard miles, right? Sure. There's, there's often not a in, an incredibly long shelf life on those types of careers, right? Mm-hmm. You have your moments. Like it's like a speaking of Cam Neely. It's like Cam Neely. Ask mm-hmm. Bruins fans about Cam Neely. Tough as nails. Scored a lot of goals. Short career. Yeah. Yeah. A guy like Nylander will be able to play forever. He'll be like Marlo. Because yeah, he'll no be one, like Ovechkin. He'll be making yeah. five million dollars yeah. at ninety three years old. Because yes. no one touches <laughs> the the men. No one touches them. Uh, Marner. That might shave a few games off because he gets clobbered a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he gets back up, but he gets clobbered a lot. Hyman, 
who I really like, like its feistiness, there's a shelf life. Mm -hmm. There's a shelf life on that style of game. And if that's what you got to do, if that's your game, that's your game. Make your money. Yeah, but you can, even if you're the top dog, like the most dominant force, which he for sure was for a long time, no one could touch Lucic physically. Every hit you throw, every punch you throw, takes a little bit out of you as well i just don't believe that he's in the best physical shape of his life i just don't believe it and also let's not let's not uh overvalue that let's say he is you know who the strongest person in the leafs organization is like strongest by far wasn't it connor carrick for a while corrado <laughs> no dude it's uh, rich Kloon. <laughs> oh yeah rich Kloon oh yeah will beat oh my goodness any yeah. he, he could probably outlift I don't know if there's an NHLer who can lift more than Rich Glue. I'm serious. Like, in the entire He's league. He's a gym rat. Loves it. In the entire league. I'm dead serious. I don't know if there's a guy who can lift more than Rich Glue. There's certainly no Leaf. Mm. There's no Leaf. Connor Carrick won the, whatever, the most fit. Deadlift or in, whatever, in, yeah. Yeah. Uh, during um, camp. It's it's just not about that, though. And, and, I'm not, and it's not a slight on Rich Glue either. It's just... I He's think probably it, in the best shape of his life. It's about playing hockey and not lifting things. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I don't think Milan Lucic's game was tipping in and stuff, though. And I think the Oilers... Bang and crash. Yeah, mm-hmm. but I think the Oilers... There's a finesse to what JVR does. There's a finesse to what Pavelski does. And if you, the, my point in this is that I think... Th- those the, guys are pretty in front of the net. Sure. Though. They're, they're not... Ugly. I'm trying to think of a. But Lucic a, could be ugly and effective. Ugly goals. My point Holmstrom, here... Holmstrom, back in the day. Is that Lucic was never given direction. The Oilers are directionless anyway. They're a rudderless ship. They are. They're completely directionless. He was never directed to do any one thing. It was like 10,000 yeah. things that he was expected to do. I wonder, listen, I'm not a Hitchcock fan. I'm not like, oh, his style is so super modern and cool. But I wonder if just having a guy who's a bit of a task master, master like he's supposed to be, it goes, do this one thing. Yeah, the This more, is the one thing I need. The more I think about it, uh, the more I actually really like that move for the Oilers because it's a it's a coach who's he's only there till the end of the year and it's a coach who the players can't tell shit. You can't tell him he's already retired a couple times. Doesn't need you. I'm not scared of you. You're not going to tarnish my legacy. I've got a cup. I'm one of the best coaches of all time. Listen to me or go to the minors. Listen to me or sit. Listen to me or go on the fourth line. I don't care who you are. I might not even bother learning your name. I'm certainly not going to meet your wife or your agent. I don't give a shit. Do what I say or get the fuck off my team. Which, by the way, is my team. Did you know that? I'm the head coach of this team right now. I'm Ken Hitchcock. Do what I say. I think he's maybe a little bit nicer than that. Maybe. Maybe not. But, I no, it's, it's I mean, he's the not right Mike, move. He's no Mike Keenan. It's the right move. It's the... The Leafs sort of did it, yeah. The Leafs did it in a uh, different way where they signed Babcock for eternity. And it was basically, hey, so we'll... (laughs) He's going to be here long after you are. Mm -hmm. If you don't shape up. If you shape up, hey, maybe you'll be here longer. It's 5.03 if you haven't noticed. Oh, I'm going to tweet it. Um, I'm going to tweet it, Ryan Lacey. Ryan Lacey, uh... Yeah, he's he's tweeted uh, a couple... uh, don't be mean to me, Leafs Nations kind of things. I can read them out. Ryan Lacey at 5 p.m. says, Okay, so as the 5 p.m. deadline is approaching from what Toronto Maple Leafs GM Cal Dubas told me, it seems like nothing has been announced officially yet. Not really sure what Dubas meant, whether it was 5 p.m. today or 5 p.m. on December 1st. Also not sure if he was meaning he was going to be updated by the Nylander camp on his answer of the rumored contract agreement by 5 p.m. So yes, there are a lot of angles to the situation, but I do strongly believe a deal of some sort is very close. I genuinely understand the Maple Leafs fan base, b- fan base if you're upset, if nothing happens this by 5 p.m. today. This guy's tweets. But just know that I was just the messenger from what Dubas told me and I have no control in what actually goes on with the Leafs and the Nylanders camp. If this d- wasn't a ploy to gain followers or anything like that, but if you want to keep following me, expect some great hockey-related tweets as I post pictures of me and NHL players. I have a lot of respect for Leafs Nation and hope that Nylander remains a Leaf for a long time. Ryan Lacey, Leafs insider. Don't be a dick to Ryan Lacey, by the way. No, I, just tweeted, I just tweeted, hey. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. 
<laughs> Steve. That's all. What? Don't be a dick. That's, I'm just, I'm greeting him. We've never met. You gotta greet someone you've never met. Um, way to revive Lucic, going back to that, is I don't think you... Maybe you start with this identity line or whatever. This third line that's clearly just bang and crash. But then you put him on a line that is slower. Dude, don't put him out there with McDavid. He can't. He just can't. What, maybe on the power play? On the power play, yeah. Put him five his, and five. No. Put his gigantic ass right in front of that net. Yes. Every day. You can't move him. Instead of bag skating him, make him do tip-ins like half an hour after the team's gone to the locker room. Um, put him on a line that is a bit slower moving, but its identity isn't just bang and crash. He's the guy who does the bang and crashing. You have someone else run the line. I keep thinking Nuge. Maybe Brodziak. You know, that line will do... That line will go as far as Kyle Brodziak takes them, which is not a great sentence. You know what I mean? Why that should be the that? quote of the day. We should make t-shirts. That <laughs> line will go as far <laughs> as Kyle Brodziak <laughs> takes them. <laughs> Can we please I make t-shirts after the show? We can't use his name. Oh, KB? His <laughs> KB. What's, What's his, his number? number? <laughs> great minds. Great what is his number? And know. then we can make it in orange and blue. Let's yeah. Let's that, make Oilers t-shirts live on the show. <laughs> Do we want to go orange base with blue writing <laughs> or blue base with orange writing? <laughs> and we'll donate all the proceeds I'm still looking for to anything Eugene on the Kyle Melnick Lewis. and keep the Senators in Ottawa. And we will be heroes in just one day. Brodziak's 28, by the way. His number is 28. His number. Yes, yes. He's from St. Paul. Oh, Minnesota? good local kid. No, St. Paul, Alberta. Oh, yeah. There's a few St. Pauls. Yeah. 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 No, I'm sorry. I've literally never heard what? of St. Paul, Paul, Alberta. Hey, hey, Catholic guy. What's the what's St. Paul the saint of? Uh, I don't remember. Who this. <laughs> I want to know. I don't. Uh, that's my middle name too. I don't know. You're Saint Steve St. Paul. Way to Glenn? go, Paul. Oh, yeah. it's Steve St. Paul, right? Steve, yeah, for sure. First <laughs> middle name is Saint. Second one's Paul. Mm. Mm. Um, when I typed into Google, what is St. Paul the patron saint of? Google tells me, St. Paul placed greater emphasis on the ideas of original sin, atonement, and the role of Jesus Christ's crucifixion in offering redemption power. Oh, redemption all the guilty power. shit. <laughs> St. Paul is the patron saint of missionaries, mm. evangelists, writers, and public workers. Hold on. Uh, wait, what so did he, he do though? <laughs> he what placed, do you mean? he placed he was a thinker. He would he wrote stuff and he <laughs> thought what, he stuff. what do you mean? What did he do? He's a saint because he was super into the god stuff. Like what did he do? <laughs> <I think. laughs> did he chase the snakes from Ireland? Do what you did want me he to do? read his entire biography? Oh, no, but like it seems like the original people... sin thing, which is basically you're born and oh, you've already committed a sin. Sorry. He was influential um, in the early development of Christianity. Okay. I'll let it slide, Paul. But you're on thin ice. <laughs> well, you, you gotta think early on in Christianity, it's like an expansion team, right? Like they gotta, they gotta, they gotta. It's like Andrew Burnett on the Thrashers and the Wild. <laughs> you gotta take where you can get, right? You know, oh, he scored forty points. That's pretty cool for an expansion team. That's cool. Yeah, I mean, we're not gonna have Kelly Buckberger on our line, our top yeah. line forever. But he can be captain, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Roman Nador on defense. <laughs> and who else did they have? They had some plurs. I mean, you gotta think, they were going up against, like, the Greek Roman, you know. Posse Nermanen. Oh, you're talking about God. Yeah, they, yeah I mean, they're going up against, <laughs> like, Judaism and then the, 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 the pantheon of gods from Greece and a uh, whole bunch paganism. of. Paganism. Paganism is in general. Worship. A lot. Um, on Catholic.org, they have fun facts about St. Paul. Oh, let's hear them. Jesse. Is that how it's worded? Fun facts? Okay. The episode is fun facts about St. Paul. <laughs> Saints. Fun facts. St. Paul. Uh, some of the fun facts about St. Paul are he was originally known as Saul. I did know that. Yes. Mm. I remember that. And he changed it to Paul for some reason. Better call Paul. Oh, they even have a they have a YouTube video if you want to. No, we're do not going to watch a YouTube video. <laughs> Just read something. But is there nothing else? Ah, uh, that was re- Where are the fun facts? He even presided over the persecutions of the early Christians and was the present and was present at the martyrdom. Martyrdom. Of martyrdom. Saint Stephen. 
Hey! So he oh. made another guy a saint. He was present at the martyrdom of Saint So Stephen. he persecuted other Christians, <laughs> developed the idea of he original sin. He presided over the persecutions of the early Christians. I don't care. And <laughs> want to get back to hockey. Uh, no, hey. I, K to 8, I did this stuff. Now I do hockey. That's what I do. We're done. We're done with the reading about drawing of St. Paul. Paul. Like, I'm pretty sure you're on, like, a teacher, like, a Catholic teacher's yeah, like, so. resource website. Hey, oh, my God, we got to learn about this today. I better Google it and find out. Yeah, uh, St. Paul died in the year 67. Mm. That is just 67. Is that is year 1,900 years before the Leafs <laughs> won their last cup. St. <laughs> Paul, patron saint of the Toronto Maple Leafs. I was about to say it. <laughs> Way to go, Paul. <laughs> All right, I'm done. All right, Brian Burke. Uh oh, Brian Burke. Oh, I don't mm. is accused of being old and accused of dropping old guy opinions all oh. over sports. I won't have it personally. I I I disagree, Brian Burke. Brian Burke basically said, and and we saw we got a full frontal view of this when the Leafs lost to the Hurricanes in a very perplexing game at the beginning of the week. Yeah, they had uh, the Hurricanes had twenty nine shots in and the followed first it up with two, <laughs> and they won. And um, won. They the Leafs sure didn't look good against them, but I think Carolina had a good night. Leafs didn't like if it did, that didn't look like a Toronto Maple Leafs night. The Leafs weren't playing their game, no, and it's, and it's they weird. lost in the first ten minutes. I didn't think the Leafs actually looked that bad. I just think it was two different styles. The Leafs had opportunities to get their shots in. They just didn't take them. They went for these passing plays that got broken up, which they that's kind of what they do. They do it a lot. Uh, they do a lot of things, especially early in games, that don't count as shots on goal, but they look threatening. You know, tip it a little wide, or if the pass gets through, that's going in, but it doesn't result in a shot on goal or even a shot attempt mm -hmm. sometimes. Uh, Carolina just peppers you. Just peppers you all game. And I noticed, like, really early on, they just lob shot after shot after shot at Freddie, but they were muffins. Mm -hmm. I didn't think they were threatening at all. And then there was this one point where I just went, oh, the Leafs are in so much trouble. Svechnikov? If they played him, he would score a lot. Dude, how they does never that guy only have five goals? Because they don't play him. And one was, he gets no ice time. He gets zero ice time. He's so good. He was my early pick to, uh, before the season pick to win the Calder. Yeah, he did. And then Elias uh, Pettersson. You, uh, that's uh, that's Dom, an animal. Dom LeCision was, I think, the guy who was pointing at He's like, man, if they played this guy, he would be really He's good. He's an animal. He is so, so good, and that's why he was picked second overall. That guy's an animal, and he's going to be such a problem for the Metro Division. Well, I, I um, so so after the, the game ends and Carolina wins and it's 5-2 or whatever. McElhaney wins. McElhaney wins. I stayed off Twitter because of that. Um, it wasn't that bad. The, uh, the one thing that, you know, they do is they do the, kind of the thunderclap. And yep. then they they skate to the boards, and then they bash themselves up against the boards. Now, Steve, at risk of repeating yourself in both of your outlets, but I know there are some people that maybe haven't seen your video yet. Um, Brian Burke said, I hate it. I don't like it. Can I read it? As Please well? read it, yeah. So on the game was on Tuesday. So this would be Wednesday on so BTS? Wednesday, Wednesday on, on primetime. No, Wednesday on primetime sports. Oh, he said something to this effect during the broadcast. Yes. yes. Prime so time. he, he expands and he goes, I don't think it's professional. I don't think it belongs in our league. If the people in Carolina like it, great. I think it's absolutely, it's absurdly amateurish. Peewee garbage stuff. They like it. Terrific. Stay and watch it. Clap. Have another beer and stay and watch them swim or canoe or whatever they're going to do next. I'm not watching. Brian Burke. Can you read that again and I'll stop you? I'll stop you. I don't think it's professional. I don't think it belongs in our league. If the people in Carolina like it, great. They like it! Full stop! That's, that's what it is, man. Man, they barely like the Hurricanes. That's, that's like... Yep, <laughs> but... They're generating, uh, they're generating buzz, buzz, which is what you need to do. That are, hey, they Promote won your the game. That was great. You know, we might come back. What is this? It's just another fun thing. And then it generates a conversation. It's better than, hey, I went to a uh, game last night and they won. They do this thing at the end of the game. They do this thing. Hockey. Oh, my God. Get out of your way. Get out of your own way. Have some friggin' fun. Like Brian Burke who I met 
recently, and I certainly didn't yell at him. When yeah, I from met all him. accounts, is a great guy. Uh, Personally, as far as I've heard, uh, met him on uh, ice surfing. Didn't get to talk to him on ice surfing. There's too much going on. But when he, oh, I'm trying to think of what he did to the Leafs, like game ops, when he was GM. And the only thing I can think of is the Marlies got cheerleaders. That's all I can think of. And I think he was the one who introduced costume Elvis and his little crew of people who throw t-shirts into the crowd in the nosebleeds. Mm -hmm. I got acquainted with them. I never caught a shirt. Still haven't. Bitter. That, that's all I can think of. And he talked about on the broadcast, one thing he said was, well, you know, I wanted to make a team that fans wanted to watch. You know, so they hit a lot and they fought a lot. The team stunk! They did not win hockey games was the issue. There were no... You, the playoff attendance was real low. No one wanted... No one went. No one went to any Leafs playoff games because mm -hmm. they didn't make it! That would have generated some buzz. That would have made them a lot more entertaining. If they fight and hit en route to a win, wonderful. Mm -hmm. But they didn't. They didn't win. So uh, I can't, I don't understand how you could shit on what the Hurricanes are doing. Look, if it's not your thing. And which is what he's saying. Fine. Fine. And a few people tweeted that. They're like, look, I don't have to like it. And that's fine. Listen, you don't have to like anything. You don't even have to like hockey. If it is, you know what? The way they skate around there and play. I don't, I don't want to watch. I'm not paying to watch people play. I want to watch them work. It's unprofessional to play. Go to Do you go to work to play? Didn't think so. You go to play to work. I don't want hockey players. I want hockey workers. Punch him like 1963. I like him. His name is Punch. You know he works. Toughest coach in hockey. Except for... Fisty McKick, <laughs> the head coach of the Montreal Maroons in 1918. World War I veteran. World War, yeah. And they called him Fisty McKick because that's what he would do in the enemy trenches. Charged into the field <laughs> with nary a gun or knife in sight. Just fisties and Just kickies. fifties and kickies. Kickies. To the Prussians or whoever happened to be into the Ottomans, they knew about Fisty McKicky, or whatever I called him. They knew about that guy. They knew all about him. Dude, have some friggin' fun. Well, I think you said it perfectly. Hockey is the best game in the world. According to you, in your opinion. And that's in my fine. opinion. I agree. There's other sports I love watching. For I sure. I like watching hockey the most. Sure. Okay, fair. Hockey culture sucks. It is the worst. Even the fun parts of it are terrible. Like, there are very few fun parts to the actual culture of it, and the fun, the allegedly fun parts are just nauseating. Bud, check out the salad. You see the salad of the. Oh! Uh, the. the I think that's fun. I laugh. I, like I laugh lingo. because it's douche chilling. Yeah. I laugh <laughs> because I can't. Mm, I, I like. It's a parody, right? But there's people like that. There's people who do well, it as a parody, and then there's people saw, who do that in earnest. We saw the Uber video. They actually talk like that. Yeah, and, you know, it's whatever, you know, you're talking laid back, your bros, whatever, but it's, it's I, I, and it's probably because I'm not a hockey player, bro. I'm a duster. I'm just a bender. I don't know. I just don't know. But even the fun, mm. chill parts of hockey, <sighs> Can barely stomach it. You would never bang your Twiggy off the glass? Uh, wait, what did he say? In I the think video? it was bang my Twiggy off the glass. Or chucked my Twiggy off the glass. Something like that. Chucked my Twiggy into the stands? Yeah, I into think. the stands, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> ah, like, have fun. Have fun for crying out loud. And you know what? A friend introduced this phrase to me. Mm. Try not to yuck someone's yum. That's disgusting. It is. It's a terrible. That sounds like what Punchy McKicky would, <laughs> would, would say. Like, Listen, a... not to yuck your yum, <laughs> but I think I'm going to kick that ottoman in the forehead. 
<laughs> what? I just, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> You're going to give me Ottoman. He's just, <laughs> just going to kick Ottoman, the Ottoman. Ottoman Turks? No, not like, the, like, chair, the, the chair. Ottoman, yeah, someone no. from the Ottoman no, Empire. No, 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 no. You're going to get that coffee table. Mm, and you're I'm going gonna... gonna, to, yeah, <laughs> because there's a bunch of Turks standing on it. Mm. You see, Fisty mm. McPunch or whatever. Fisty I, Mc, I like yeah. Fisty McKicky. <laughs> so if you're yum, Fisty McKicky, if your yum is saying Dangle Snipe Sally Salad Bud, I'm not going to yuck it. Yeah. No, uh, no. I'm sorry for yucking your yum. Now, the yum in Carolina is something I also happen to find tasty. It's the storm surge, I think they call it. Mm -hmm. The clap, and then they run into the boards, and they have fun! Literally, you're criticizing clapping at children. <laughs> at the end of the game, the kids rush the glass, do the clap. Leaf fans were doing it, I heard. People were sure. sending me on Twitter. Leaf fans. Because it's fun. Because it's fun! I'm here! Might as they lost. Might as well enjoy the clap thing. It's the end of the game. Kids storm the glass. Storm, you see. They storm the glass, and then their hockey idols bang into them. And they maybe they get it on Snapchat or whatever the kids are doing. I'm hip. They get it on their phone, and it's a moment they remember forever. Or. The players could raise their sticks at center ice and leave. <laughs> Which, by the way, is something they would never do 10 years ago. And and remember, do you remember the first time? I think it was the Rangers that started doing that, and everyone was like, what a team! <laughs> Brilliant! <laughs> Did, what respect they have for their fans! Oh my god! Are we the oatmeal of sports? <laughs> They, li they gathered around the... There's literally a circle made for them in the middle of the ice. Pre-made. Pre-painted. And they stood in it. They got in it. I'm glad they found it. And they raised their sticks for the fans. And people lost their minds. The New York Rangers revolutionizing the sport. And you know, someone back then was like, I don't like this allegedly European nonsense. Let them clap. Let them bang off the boards. Mm. If they won the game, they earned it. If they do it after a loss, it's maybe a little silly. Also, can I just say, I, I think, um, I think that as we get older, I think everybody experiences this. You go, music. It's not as good as it used to be. Mm. Movies. Not as good as it used to be. You know why? Because you grew up with that. Kids today. With their tablets and their things. Mm. Ah! Oh! When I, when I was a kid, we played with frozen horse poo. I actually had a science teacher tell me that. They used to play what they called them road apples. That's what they played hockey with. And they would use just couch that's, cushions. That's in Bobby Bond's book. Couch cushions <laughs> yeah. where they would fling horse shit off the couch cushions. That's what they played with. And that's, that's, what, that's why they were real men, because they threw poo at each other, and that was hockey. That's more fun than chill. Can you imagine getting your tooth knocked out by a piece of petrified horse shit? <laughs> It's good times. Yeah. But my point is this. It's unprofessional to play with rubber. <laughs> Let them Have it bounce off of things. It's, you know, when... when Clap Brian, shit bombs like a man. I know Brian Burke has been in hockey a long, long time, and I don't begrudge him saying our game. But you got to remember, when it is our game, that means that eventually it passes to the next generation, and that's what's happening. I used to be with it, but then they changed what it was. Now I'm... Now... <laughs> Now what I'm with isn't, <laughs> and what's it seems weird and scary to me, and it'll happen to you too, <laughs> Abe Simpson. It's true, except without stuttering and giggling. It's true. In the middle, it also reminds me of that. Uh, I don't like it. What was the quarterback? Um, no, there's a haircut you can set your watch to. That's right. Yeah, I don't remember. Uh, that's from King of the Hill, right? No, I think that's from The Simpsons. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. The uh, Joe Namath? Joe no. Namath. Oh, oh, yeah. I don't like Namath with his long hair, and then he goes yeah. to this other guy. There's a haircut you can set your Trim watch Trim those sideburns! <laughs> also Simpsons. Simpsons sport. Let's do the press conference, and we have to hurry up because Steve and SL have to go to oh, a work party at 6.30, and we got a text message about it. You got it. that really? text too, did you? Yes, I did. The presser, S D P. Ah! Steve press conference. A, oh. You think I get away with a damn thing? By the way, quick question. Is Columbus on Central Time? Mm, no. 
No, I don't think so. Because they might be on Central Time. If they were, then five o'clock hasn't happened yet. Jesse's looking it up right now. I don't think they are. Ohio is a very uh, it's a mysterious place. It is. They control every election. We don't know what time zone they're in. The current local time in Columbus, Ohio, USA, is five twenty-five okay. Eastern. Yeah. yeah, sorry, Ryan Lacey. More like Lion Lacey. <laughs> You see, because he's lying. Lion, Ryan. Lions are unprofessional. Mm. True. Mm. True. We have a hockey team called the Lions. It's really not. Let people have fun. Are we? We wrap that topic. Yeah. We're good. We are all on our phones or on the internet. We're looking. The Nylander thing is going to get announced the second. Should we just leave? Should like a blank space for if he gets signed and we just insert it. Should the Maple Leafs parade? God forbid it ever happens. Travel down Lakeshore, Front Street, or Young Street. Lakeshore would be a nightmare. What? Do, who suggested that? The question is: Should the Maple Leafs? This is from the oh, Dan the Man Can fan. No, you start from Exhibition, and then you walk all the way. Yeah. What Lake it Street. should, what it needs to do, oh. it does. The, what the Leafs, Street, the Leafs Cup one. Parade does need to go some somewhere near Maple Leaf Gardens, though. You have to work Maple Leaf Gardens. So then you have to go up Young Street. You do have to go and up Young Street. And then you have to go around. And then and come back down. Church, well, and then you're come gonna, back down. You got to work a left-hand turn in Well, there? you're going to have to have a it's long chaos, parade, man. There's, chaos, there's, chaos, there's a lot of pent up frustration there. There's three left-hand turns. Whoa. Whoa. No, a right, a left, a left, then a right. I made the mistake. <laughs> we, <laughs> al- we almost used a joke on Tim and Sid where Babcock doesn't make left-hand turns. Well, you know, hey, Mike, how, how do you get to the Loblaws there? Well, first you go right, and then you got to go right and go right again. And then, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, uh, that never uh, saw the light of day. Now I just made it awkwardly. Uh, yeah, it's got to be young. Okay. It's got to be young. Most yeah. people. But you have to do a little quick stop over at Maple Leaf Gardens on your way down. Sure. Yes. Or just wave to it from young. No. <laughs> no. You got to go. You have you to. You have it's to. It's the Loblaws. And the, Ry- the Ryerson other gym. Like, the oh, rest, what are, what not even the gym. What are we it's saying the other here? Gym. <laughs> like, it's not Maple Leaf Gardens. It's the Scotiabank Arena's where they play. Who gives a shit about Maple Leaf Gardens? Whoa. Whoa. Dog. History, my Dog. Ass. You Dog. know what? It is, it's, <laughs> it's new. It's a new thing. What the Leafs did a really good job of with the 100th anniversary is they honored the shit out of the past, and then when they were done with it, they went, moving on. Yeah, because it's time forward. you're going to walk by stop. Loblaws and say, Hey, Apples, remember when you had a hockey game there? That used to be a cigar shop, mind you. There used to be a cigar shop right on the corner of Maple Leaf Gardens, in, like right in the arena. And it was Man. owned by, by Siggy, S- Siggy, Siggy McGar. McGar. Jr. <laughs> Siggy McGar. Who was 90. <laughs> I thought it was going to say Siggy McGar. But, uh, <laughs> but, no. <laughs> but no, I guess not. You're a silly fuck. <laughs> hey, Adam, put a sock in it. Ah, oh, oh, foot jokes. Uh, 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 mm. I like that you kept that up, mm. though. It's the theme of the show. Front mm. foot. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm still waiting for that sweet podcast with that wacky morning show trio of Elliot Freeman, John Tavares, and Austin Matthews. I can't wait for them to take over. It's going to be great. <laughs> In the morning. <laughs> Front foot in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> On your radio. All right, Jesse, next uh, question. Or any question. Willie! Can't you hear me yell? You're I'm putting good. me through hell. No more questions. Okay, well, we're done. None? <sighs> Boo on your questions today, guys. Come on. I'm uh, checking my phone. I'm upset. I'm upset. Hey. Okay, how about this one? Final question to end it. I thought it was kind of interesting. Some RT Gold. You travel back to 2010 with all your current hockey knowledge. All right? So you, 2018 person, you get to go back to 2010, and your job is to get hired by an NHL team. Do you think you can do it? And how quickly? Ooh. Sorry, say that again. So, Adam, when you're done texting. Sorry. You 2018, Adam. You get to go back to 2010, and your goal is to get hired by, a, by an NHL team with all of your current knowledge. How quickly do you think you can do it? So, okay. So, this is interesting. Do mm-hmm. we go on the principle of our actions in the past change the present? Or do we go back and go, like, because we know every hit and miss in the draft. Uh-huh. 
right? Uh huh. So that's what I would start also, doing is posting my draft rankings and then watch them like and then like watch them prominently like in history look but better. But that's that's such a long road because <laughs> like the then you, you the hate silver, but a few years ago, yeah, the hockey, you, yeah, you'd have to post them and then people would have to be like, okay, this random dude just posted this thing or Adam Wild from 2010. I don't know where you were at the time. I was in I was in Toronto. So in Toronto. radio DJ posts his draft rankings. Patrick and then, Hornquist in the first round. Yeah. This <laughs> is like the last pick of the draft. So it would take you a couple of years to get a job. Probably. Yeah, Probably. Yeah. Um, I also, I, I mean, the, the, I what could also cheat do? on that because all I'd have to do is say I would do the exact same thing that I did because I do technically work for an NHL team part-time. Whoa. Stop. Are you getting a ring? Well, you got the... Would no, no, I'm free. Right. No, I'm freelance. I don't think <gasps> would so. Would Adam get no. a ring? I don't think so. You have to be an employee. I'm not an employee. Huh. I think Adam get a ring. <laughs> I'd pay to get a ring. I'd be like, yeah, wh- listen, what do I need to do? I think you can do that regardless of whether you work for the team or not. <laughs> I think Adam might get a ring. No, I don't get a ring. I don't. You have to be an employee. It's, it's different. Employee. I'm a contract worker. It's different. Okay. Do you think <laughs> that'd be like a you... guy who like cleans the windows at the Scotiabank <laughs> Arena getting a ring? He should. <laughs> I mean, it'd be great if he did. He should. You think you'll get to touch the cup? Me? Yeah. I mean, whose cup? Leafs. Oh my! Oh, Stanley. oh yeah. <laughs> Good game. Uh, hey think, Matthews. Yeah, I think Check it. <laughs> just a quick pat. Uh, no, I think uh, I think uh, I mean. You ever seen the contortionist on the morning show? No. And this, no. this contortionist basically curled himself into a ball like a potato bug, but going backwards. Mm. And uh, the morning show host to be like, all right, so we're done with that. We're going to do the next thing. And he taps him on what he thought was his butt. Ah. It was not. <laughs> <laughs> he was looking at the awesome. wrong Woo! side of that man. Well, listen, and it was very awkward. That's a contortionist fault. I mean, come on. <laughs> what can the morning show host even do there? <laughs> I'm taking his side. Don't defend your As co-workers. a former morning show host in Toronto on TV, I, I know what it's like to, to be under that sort of pressure. Um... <laughs> And I, I mean, I've never tapped someone's genitals live on the air. I didn't but, say that. Uh, I don't really think you just did. <laughs> but, I mean, occasionally mistakes happen. Steven, we send 2018 you back to 2010. You have to get hired by an NHL team and prove that you are the smartest man in hockey. You could have. How are you doing this? You had you were running for Leafs Nation at that point. I talented Mr. Ripley steal Kyle Dubas' identity. Oh I just steal. I steal all his, his wardrobe and I just <laughs> become him. I grow a little taller. You don't need to do that. Yeah. That's what I do. All right. Because I already have his reputation, and then I just climb up. Mm. You know, I uh, I would also just mess with people. Like I, I I like I think I would I would squander the opportunity to work for an NHL team by just messing with bloggers. Like I would I would go back in time, and like publish like entire Jeffler articles five minutes before he was about to <laughs> word for word <laughs> slight changes and just have him be like what <laughs> I worked for hours on this thing <laughs> son of a bitch it's like, got he, awesome he would just be, yeah he'd that's be, a great idea yeah he'd be very upset <laughs> would you start the athletic cam Sharon would stuff? you yeah. start the athletic <laughs> in 2010 mames journal <laughs> <laughs> of the mathletic, of the and I would math. just change everything a little <laughs> bit. Just change everything. Mm. My yeah. name is Skyler Fellows, and yeah. I write for the Mathletic. Would you be Steve Five or Six? Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> With Gart but, the, but like the day before. <laughs> oh yeah, you do dart gags up the day before. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you, you grow your beard out for years <laughs> just to be on a brand, <laughs> except the tape. Shave your head, grow your beard, dye it red. No, I go this to the Bruins series up. in 2013 as Dark Guy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. It was never Jason happened. Jason shows up. He's like, what the hell? Oh, oh man. Oh. Well, now if he's done it. <laughs> And he, he becomes a fan of some other team, becomes a Capitals fan. You never know. Wow. And the, but then he'd have a cup ring. He yeah. would. He wouldn't be dark guy, but he'd be Jason with a ring. I think he'd rather be Jason with a ring. I don't think so. I think yeah. Jason's pretty devoted to the Leafs. Yeah. Well, he now he might get to be Jason and dark guy with a ring. Mm. Mm. Except mm. in Washington. Why is he getting a ring? 
listen, man. I don't just, know why you added I'm that. I'm not really randomly. sure why he's getting like, a Embrace ring. fun! Why are you yucking my yum? <laughs> <laughs> All right? <laughs> It'd be great, like, with every little thing I change, there's just little changes to the present. Like, you know, people just eating steaks with a spoon. <laughs> it was Silly hockey, things Steve. Of that you can't just change the world. Yeah, but It's a like, different conversation. No, it changes things, man. <laughs> It's just it's wild. I'd go see a Prince concert. Uh, hey, the, welcome to I the have, Steve Wild podcast. I have a terrible story with about Adam that. Adam Dangle and Jesse Blake. I had no Chris. <laughs> Your name is Chris. I had oh. Prince tickets in my cart when he was uh, what was uh, that last Fusion show at Roy Thompson Hall? Roy Thompson Hall. Like everything's just a little different. So, yeah. I I was gonna get tickets to the Roy Thompson Hall show in Toronto like months before he passed away, and they're in my cart. And I'm like, eh, I don't need to spend this much on Prince. They see- were three hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, and I was like, I'll just see him next time. I'll I'll have more money then, and then a couple months later he does. My mom said, "Please uh, come to the show with me. Please come to the show with me. Please, you and Caprice will buy tickets together." And I said, "You know what, mom? We're saving up to go mm-hmm. to England. We just, you know." And I I told her that I'm like, I got an engagement ring. I got to mm-hmm. pay for. Like, I really don't have the money, and I did. But it was like, you know, you just want to keep your little yeah. buffer zone of money. Like, I didn't... $700 is what it would have cost For us to go. There's a tickets, difference yeah. between having the amount of money you need to buy something and being able to afford it. Because $700 yeah. is yes. a lot. Yes. For a, one night. No, it's not even one night. It's a couple hours. Yeah, and it's Prince- Who would spend that on Jay's playoff tickets? It's <laughs> asinine. <laughs> this conversation feels strangely familiar. <laughs> Hmm. So I'm just like, ah, I'll see him next time. Prince is going to do a, like that big grand tour where he's going to do all his shows and yeah. do an arena and not the Roy Thomas Hall. I'll see him then. Yeah. And then it can't happen. So That's why I'm dying to see the Rolling Stones one more time. They're, going to, they're doing a football stadium tour through the United States next summer. And last time they did the Steelers one, but this year they're not doing Heinz Field. But I'm going to go. I'm just going to find a way I'm going to go. You're going to take a private jet. Hmm. Because he can afford it. Mm-hmm. He's going to roll on into there. Oh, pissing hundies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway. Hey, listen. We got to go because you got to go. I do. Yeah. Otherwise, your wife will divorce us. And then you. Oh, in that order. In that order. Well, we go first. Oh, the Leafs tweeted. Oh, what is it? Oh. oh Are bro. you joking? <laughs> Fuck off, Jesse. The Leafs are so with Columbus for the second time this week. Henny Tweets checks in to you, say you for tonight's game. I'm done. Notes and I'm notes. done. I'm tweeting at them, how dare you. That wasn't funny. Follow the guys on Twitter, at Steve underscore Dangle, at Adam W-Y-L-D-E, and at Jesse Blake. The Steve Dangle Podcast. Brought to you by Panago Pizza. Order at Panago.com and stuff your face with deliciousness.